Hello, Daddy. Why... Why do you look at me so strangely? John, are you afraid of high places or confined areas? No. What is all about? Well, I've been studying abnormal psychology in my spare time. Oh. Well, that's a pretty abstruse subject for a working man, isn't it? I can handle it. I can handle it. I have a very definite reason for delving into it, John. I'm sure you must have, Daddy. Oh, yes. For a long time now, I've had a strong suspicion that there's... Well... My wife and children are not exactly normal. <laughs> they act funny. But you're all right. Oh, certainly. I think. <laughs> Take my wife. She's absolutely insane about waffles. <laughs> well, what about it? Does that make her abnormal if she likes waffles? Well, I found out yesterday she had a trunk full of them. <laughs> but my immediate concern is Snooks. At any rate, I bought a book on psychiatry and abnormal psychology. Uh -huh. Read up on it and waited for Snooks to come home so I could try out a few theories. And I was sitting in my study when she came in. Hello, Daddy. Oh, hello, Snooks. Come in and close the door. Why? I want to have a little talk with you. Close the door. I can't, Daddy. Ah, claustrophobia. <laughs> you have claustrophobia. What's that? Oh, it's a morbid dread of being shut up in a confined space. That's what's the matter with you. No, it ain't. Then why can't you close the door? Because it's already closed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> open it. It's a little stuffy in here. Can't stand these small rooms. <laughs> what are you so finicky about? I'm tired from the party. Party? What party? The one that Red took me to. And we played kissing games. Oh. Kissing? <laughs> ah. Precocious development of the Freudian id. <laughs> uh, what kind of kissing games did you play? Well, we had to spin a bottle, and when I turned it to a boy, he had to kiss you or give you a lollipop. I was very lucky, Daddy. Oh? How were you lucky? <laughs> I won 86 lollipops. <laughs> I see. Indications of sublimated introversion. What are you talking about, Daddy? Snooks, you see this book I have in my hand? Yeah. It's a textbook on abnormal psychology. Mm. It deals with the insane mind. And it can bring about the cure of a person with a mental affliction. Did you read it, Daddy? I did. Do you feel better now? <laughs> I'm fine. I bought it on account of you. Why? Well, I decided that corporal punishment may not be the answer to correcting your many misdeeds. I'm sure you're not always aware that you're doing wrong, are you? Are you? Ain't I? <laughs> I think not. And this book might save you from half the spankings you get. But I taught them, Daddy. Hmm. Oh, I suppose you figure that two books will save you from all the spankings, is that it? Yeah, that's it. Hmm. Sounds like the shrewd reasoning of incipient schizophrenia. <laughs> oh, I wonder if all those spankings have injured your head. No, Daddy. It's just the opposite. What do you mean? I like it when you spank me. You mean you purposely do naughty things to get spanked? Uh-huh. Good heavens, this is terrible. Doesn't it hurt you when I spank you? Sure it hurts. Then why do you like it? Well, every time you spank me, I cry. Yes. And when I cry, you feel sorry for me. Well? And when you feel very sorry, you give me a dime to buy ice cream. <laughs> oh, I see. It's the ice cream you're after. No, I hate ice cream. Then why do you buy it? I don't. I buy grapes instead. Grapes? Yeah. And when I bring them home, I take them upstairs and squash them on Robespierre's nose. That's what I like. <laughs> oh, you had me worried for a minute. <laughs> Snooks, I'm going to psychoanalyze you. Huh? I want you to throw up your inhibitions and remove your repression. Do I have to take off? No, no. <laughs> you do not have to take off your hat. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> now, uh, we'll start with a very simple test for reasoning power. Now, listen closely. 
I have three brothers, Ralph, George, and myself. That's wrong, isn't it? Uh-huh. Why? You forgot Uncle Louie. <laughs> That's not the answer at all. In the first place, Uncle Louis is Mommy's brother. And in the second place, I haven't any brothers. Well, why did you say you had three brothers? It's a hypothetical question, and the brothers I spoke of are imaginary. Who put them there? Where? In a menagerie. <laughs> I didn't say anything about a menagerie. I said imaginary. But let's assume that I have brothers and their names are Ralph and George. Is it right for me to say I have three brothers? No. Is it right for anybody to say it? Yeah. Who could say it? Your sister. What are you talking about? Well, what's the answer? Why, it's obvious. I only have... Uh, I, uh, if I say I have... Wait a second till I look in the book. There, there. I, I was right. The answer is two brothers. Is it? Yes. And you didn't do very well on that question. No. <laughs> but we'll proceed with a perception test. Now close your eyes for a minute. No, I don't want to. Oh, go on. I won't hurt you. Now close your eyes. There. Now try to eliminate all the usual noises, like traffic, or my breathing, or yours. Mm-hmm. Good. Is it all quiet? Yes, Daddy. Now listen. Do you hear any strange voices? Hey, hurry! I don't hear nothing, Daddy. You... You didn't hear anything at all? No. Well, I thought I... Oh, this is ridiculous. Did you hear something, Daddy? No, 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 of course not. Hey, sure. Uh. <laughs> it's nothing. You see, some poor deluded people think they hear voices. It's the penetration of the subconscious. Yes. Yes. There's one thing that no walls, no doors, no windows can shut out. It reaches you no matter where you are. Do you know what that is? Yeah, the smell of boiled cabbage. <laughs> no, it's your subconscious. But let's go on with the psychoanalysis. Just a simple little riddle. All right. Now listen carefully. All right. It's not my sister, it's not my brother. But still, it's a child of my father and mother. Who is it? I don't know. Can't you guess? No. It's me. Is it? Yes. Uh -huh. Don't you see hey, if I... Stop. Come on out. I heard it again. <laughs> I heard it, I tell you. It was only Red Daddy. He's waiting for me outside. Oh. Oh. Well, call him in. Yeah, and I'll see if he's crazy, too. I'll ask him that test. I guarantee he'll know the answer. Come on in, Red. Hey, I've been waiting outside so long. Oh, hello, Mr. Higgins. Hello, Red. Uh, go on, ask him, Sox. All right. Are you crazy, Red? Huh? Well, now see if you can do this test. It's not my sister. It's not my father. Brother. Brother. But still it's a child of my father and mother. Who am I? <laughs> who is it? Yeah, who is it, Red? Oh, that's an old one. It's you. No, it ain't. It's my daddy. <laughs> oh, what's the use? The child's barmy. <laughs> Well, it seems the Higgins family of Sycamore Terrace rarely have the same neighbors for very long. Why? Because Snooks usually beats the daylights out of their children. So, finally, the Marshall family could stand Snooks no longer and moved out like the Thompsons had done before them and the Smiths before them and so on. But some new neighbors have moved in, evidently attracted by the lowered property values. Here's Mummy telling Daddy about the new people next door. That's right, Lancelot. A woman with a husband and a little boy just moved in. Hmm. I suppose you had a field day standing by the window trying to look into the house. Well, I haven't had much luck. Every time I'd race to a window, she'd get there first and pull the blind. <laughs> Smart woman. She was just a shade ahead of you. <laughs> oh, very funny. Then you really don't know much about our new neighbors. Well, after all, dear, they only moved in a couple of hours ago, Lancelot. I really didn't find out anything except that their name is Fenwick. They've been married in 25, lived in Philadelphia from 28 to 33, moved to Jersey in 34, and their first son was born in 1941, moved to Sycamore Terrace in 1950, and they're all vaccinated for smallpox on their left legs. Outside of that, I don't know a thing about it. Why didn't you tell me Mr. Fenwick has a mole on his hip? Because it isn't true. It happens to be further down. <laughs> 
Thank you, Luella Parsons. <laughs> anyway, I hope we get along with the Fenwicks better than we did with the Marshalls. Well, we will, dear, if Snooks just doesn't start beating up on the little boy like she did with the Marshalls. Yeah, I'm going to have a little talk with Snooks about that right now. Oh, hi, Daddy. I was just playing with my chemistry set. Well, glad to see you're doing something constructive for a change. Yeah, I just invented a new cleaning fluid, and I put your shake in it. Oh, no, you didn't. Oh, yes, I did, and the shake came out snowy white. Well, uh, why, that's amazing. There's only one trouble. Oh, what's that? It was blue when I put it in. <laughs> oh, Snooks, how could you? It ain't so bad, Daddy. Now the shake will match your white flannel suit. My suit is blue flannel. Uh-uh. Oh, heavens. Does everything you put in that solution come out white? No. Robespierre came out green. Oh. Snooks, I'm going to punish you for this by taking away one of your greatest pleasures. You don't get to spit out the window for a week. <laughs> Besides that, you're not going to a movie for a month. All right, you can stop that. The very reason I came up to talk to you was about these antagonizing things that you're always doing to people. Why, the Marshal's main reason for moving was because you kept socking their son in the nose. And now the Fenwicks have just moved in with their son. Oh, boy, I've been in the mood for a new nose. <laughs> for heaven's sake, don't you ever get tired of hitting people in the nose? Yeah, sometimes for a change, I kick them in the teeth. <laughs> Well, you're not going to do either to the new boy. The way you quarreled with the little Marshall boy was terrible. You never saw eye to eye with him on anything. I tried, but he couldn't see eye to eye. Why not? I had my fist in him. <laughs> now, you listen to me. When you fight, it reflects on your parents. What I'm asking is, the next time you take it into your head to, to sock somebody, will you think of me first? Sure. I'll be glad to sock you free. I didn't mean that at all. Your constant scrapping will give people the wrong idea of your home life. Why, they'll think all your mother and I do is fight all the time. And that ain't true, is it? Why, of course not. I've never laid a hand on your mummy. She's too fast for me. <laughs> now, look, Snooks. I admit that sometimes a fight is unavoidable. But you should never raise your fist to a person unless you have a good reason. Well, I had a good reason for fighting with Billy Marshall. Well, what was it? Well, my reason is, uh... Uh... Well, I'm waiting. Well, I'm thinking. Why must you torment me this way? Why can't you just leave me alone when I feel like playing the piano? Because I want to play, too. You don't know how to play. I can lay. <laughs> oh. Do you really mean that, Snooks? Yes, Dad. Because nothing would please me more. And if I teach you to play, will you practice faithfully every day? Mm-hmm. All right, darling. Mm -hmm. Sit here beside me. <laughs> Who knows? You may turn out to be a child prodigy. Now, before I give you the first lesson, suppose we try to find out just how much natural ability you have. How? Well, see if you can pick out a tune. Whatever music comes into your head. All right. Bye-bye, baby. All right, all right. We can forget the prodigy business right now. <laughs> Shall I play some more, Daddy? No. Pay a little attention, sir. There are seven major musical notes in the scale. Where's the scale? Right here. Now listen. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. See this note? That's A. A what? <laughs> a nothing. A is just its name. Now what comes after A? B. And what comes after E? F. Good. <laughs> what comes after G? Wig. <laughs> oh, no. Daddy. All right. What comes after G? H. 
No. After G, you start all over again with A. Now. A, 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 what note is this? A. No! Didn't you hear me singing it? Well, it's A. Well, it sounded like A. <laughs> Quiet, Snokes. I don't want any trouble with you today. I get one Saturday afternoon off and your mother makes me take you to see some kid's picture. Who's the kid? I don't even know the name of the thing. What's playing? Or else. Or else? Mm-hmm. That couldn't be a movie title. Well, Mommy said you were going to take me to see the picture. Or else. Well, believe me, I'd have told her a thing or two if I didn't want to play poker tonight. Oh, here's the movie house, Daddy. Oh, Lord. The Catman's Revenge. It's very spooky. I can imagine. Well, come on. Oh, we're two, please. One child. Is that the child? Well, what do you think she is, my grandmother? How old are you, little lady? Me? Yes, you. Whatever my daddy says. Snooks, the man wants to know how old you are. Tell him. Is five too much? <laughs> Sorry, bud. Fifty cents each. Oh, all right. Here's your dollar. Well, let go of it. Peasant. Come on, Snooks. Now, listen. Before we go in, are you, uh, sure? Yes, Daddy. <laughs> You're positive? Uh-huh. All right, fine. Catman's revenge, here we come. Gosh, it's dark in here. Do you see any seats, Snooks? There's two. Okay, yeah. slide right in that row. Mm-hmm. And don't forget to say, pardon me, as you go past the people. All right. Pardon me. Uh, pardon me. Pardon me. Uh, pardon me. Oh, my corn. Oh, pardon me. Oh, my corn. Pardon me. Daddy, can I sit on your lap? No. You want to sit on my lap? Certainly not. Well, we better go back, because there's only one seat here. <laughs> oh, fine. Come on. Uh, pardon me. Pardon me. Oh, my corn. Oh. Pardon me. Why don't you look where you... Oh, my corn. Pardon me. Pardon me. Pardon me. Pardon me. Pardon me. All right, Pardon stop me. that. <laughs> You're standing in the aisle now. Oh, pardon me. Come on. Oh, look, there's two seats right there. Mm-hmm. Now sit down and behave yourself. And this picture better be good. It is. How do you know? Because I seen it twice yesterday. Oh, you did? Well, why didn't you tell me outside? It wasn't playing outside. Oh, come on. Let's get out of here. Oh, wait. Wait a minute. Look what's happening to that man in the picture. Good heavens. There's fangs growing out of his mouth. Yeah, he's turning into a cat. Are you coming, Daddy? Uh, sit down a minute, Snooks. L l let's see what happens. He gets killed. Well, don't tell me. <laughs> I, I, I'd like to enjoy it. But he comes to life again. Snokes. He comes back as a cat. Excuse me, bud. Is the dialogue on this screen interfering with your conversation? You got me so I don't know what's going on in this picture. I'll tell you. No! <laughs> this is where the cat man gets his revenge. Please! The cat man shoots the hero. The hero shoots the cat man. He's where the cops come in. They break the door down. <laughs> everybody shoots everybody. They all get killed in the end, that's all. Oh, oh, no, it isn't. There's one more thing. What? This. Hmm. 
table looks fine. Now, where are the cigars? Oh, here. Mm-hmm. I guess he'll fall for this layout, all right. Hello, Daddy. Oh, hello, Snooks. Oh, uh, let's have a look at you. Why did I have to put on my new dress, Daddy? Because my boss is coming for dinner. Oh, I... Well, uh, well, we don't have guests very often, and it's good to make social contacts and fraternize with intellectual people. My boss is a very smart man, and I like to listen to his conversation. Do you understand? Uh-huh. You're trying to get a raise. <laughs> Nothing of the kind. And I don't want you making any cracks when he gets here, either. I won't, Daddy. Above all, don't say anything about his hair. Why? Just don't, that's all. What's the matter with his hair? Nothing. I'm just warning you not to make any remarks about it. All right. And listen, Snooks. You're not to come into the dining room while we're having dinner. Not even if my boss asks you to. Why? Never mind why. All I want you to do is greet Mr. Gordon and then run upstairs and play. All right. And now we'd better have a little rehearsal. I'll be Mr. Gordon. Who is he? My boss. I'll be my boss. Huh? I said I'm Mr. Gordon. No, you ain't. You're my daddy. We're just pretending. I want to make sure you'll behave nicely when Mr. Gordon comes. Now, I'm Mr. Gordon, and I'm coming in. <coughs> oh, good evening, Snooks. Oh, Daddy. No, no. Say good evening to Mr. Gordon. Where is he? He's not here yet. Now, why should I say good evening to him? You're not saying it to him. You're saying it to me. Right now, I'm Mr. Gordon, even though I'm still your daddy. And while Mr. Gordon isn't even here yet, you can say good evening to him because you're really saying it to me. And don't ask me if I feel all right. Why? Now, don't you start to irritate me, Snooks. And another thing. In case Mr. Gordon asks you to come into dinner, I want you to say no thanks. I've already eaten. Now, let's try it. All right. Now, here we go. Where are we going? Nowhere! Ah. Now, let's try it. Oh, good evening, Snooks. No, thank you. I've already eaten. Say good evening first. Why? Because you've got to greet him. Now, let's try it again. <clears throat> good evening, Snooks. Good evening, Mr. Gordon. Fine. Oh, uh, Snooks, <laughs> will you come in and eat with us? Uh-huh. No, I told you to say you'd already eaten. I'm still hungry. Just the same, you've got to say I've already eaten. Uh-huh. Say I've already eaten. Good evening, Snooks. Will you eat with us? Daddy's already eaten. But I'm hungry. No, no, no. Snooks, I, I don't want to lose my temper with you. When he asked you to come in and eat, just say... Oh, there he is now. Now, remember, Snooks. All right. Oh, uh, come right in, Mr. Gordon. Yeah. Nice place you are. There he is. Oh, is this baby Snooks? Yes, sir, Mr. Gordon. Shake hands with Mr. Gordon, Snooks. Oh. What a cute child. Uh, dinner's all ready. Okay. Uh, oh, Snooks, will you have a bite with us? Snooks. I say, will you have a bite with us? No, thanks. I've already bitten. <laughs> well, uh, run along upstairs and play, Snooks. Uh, this way, Mr. Gordon. Daddy? Yes? Why did he tell me not to say anything about his hair? What's that? He ain't got any. <laughs> hey, you think that's funny, young lady? Uh-huh. You look like my Aunt Chloe. <laughs> oh, oh uh, pay no attention to her, Mr. Gordon. Uh, she's a great little clown. <laughs> what are you yelling about? I don't know. Well, let her come in and sit with us while we eat, Higgins. Oh, no, she has to uh, do her homework. Uh, don't you, Snooksy? No, I don't. Oh, all right, come on. I uh, Sit here, Mr. Gordon, and Snooks, you sit by me. Ma, I don't want to. Well, why not? I want to sit near Mr. Gordon and watch him do some tricks. Tricks? Uh, what tricks? I wish I was dead. Will you have some water, Mr. Gordon? Uh, no, thank you. Ah! Well, what's the matter? Make him swallow the water, Daddy. Well, why do you want to see me swallow water? Because Daddy says you drink like a fish. <laughs> oh, she made that up. She made it up, so help me, Mr. Gordon. I never said anything of the kind. You go upstairs this minute, you little scamp. If he takes me out, I'll spill the soup on Mr. Gordon. Uh, well, I, I must say, Higgins, uh, this little daughter of yours makes eating here a pleasure. You like it, Mr. Gordon? Uh, no, he doesn't like it. Mr. Gordon wants you to leave the room so he can eat in peace. What are you doing? My penny fell under the table. Be careful, Snooks. You're pulling the table. Uh, hey, look out. Snooks, the whole thing's going to... Oh, I think I'll go now. Oh, 
serves the whole dinner. I wasn't very hungry anyhow. I think I'll go to... Oh, now, just a minute, Mr. Gordon. Uh, please don't leave. We might be able to straighten this out. I... Give him some pie, Daddy. Hmm? Oh, yeah, yes. How about a piece of green apple pie, hmm? Mm-hmm. Here, uh, look at it. Oh, you'll love it. Well, well all right. Uh, have you a little piece of cheese to go with it? A cheese? Oh, 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 I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Gordon. There isn't a piece of cheese in the house. Yes, there is, Daddy. I'll go get it. Oh, fine. Phew. I'm terribly sorry about this. That's all right. The uh, child didn't mean it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Here's a cheese, Mr. Gordon. Oh, thanks, Nooch. Yeah. Mmm, well, that's good, too. <laughs> Eat it all. Oh, yes, well, I will. Mm. You know, that, that's funny. I, I distinctly remember Mother saying we were out of cheese. Mmm, this is great. <clears throat> I guess you've got sharper eyes than your daddy, eh, Snooks? Uh-huh. Uh, uh, where did you find that cheese, Snooks? In the mouth. Uh, what do I do, little... Uh. The other day, the phone rang and... Hello? Hello, Mr. Benchley. Why, Baby Snooks. I want you to bring a copy of your system over here right away. What for, Snooks? So I can handle my little daddy. Oh, you mean your daddy wants a copy of my system so that he can handle you. That's it, isn't it? Is it? (laughs) Now, here's where we use reason and logic. Snooks, your Uncle Robert is a very busy man. He can't come over right now. Why? Well, I'm just about to go on the air. Oh, I want you to come over. Oh, but Snooks, now... (laughs) Now, Snooks, don't don't, don't do that. Don't do that. I can't stand it. (laughs) All right, I'll be right over. All right. Now, as I was saying, never give in to a child who... uh, So I hurried over to the Higgins' house. Mr. Higgins? Yes. Well, I'm Robert Benchley. Oh, the noted authority on child psychology. Well, I don't know. Uh, Since your daughter, Snooks, is the country's most famous problem child, I thought I ought to come over and uh, have a chat with her. Why, yes. Come right in, Mr. Benchley. Thanks. Uh, Where is the uh, (laughs) little darling? Oh, she's around somewhere. Mr. Higgins, why have you locked that poor defenseless child in the closet? Well, I caught her mowing the front lawn. Well, I think that was very nice of her. With my electric razor? (laughs) Well, (laughs) Mr. Higgins locking her in the closet won't help. I insist that you let her out immediately. Oh, you do? All right, Benchley. I see you've got to learn the hard way. Come on out, Snooks. All right, Daddy. Snooks? This is Mr. Robert Benchley. <laughs> he's funny looking. <laughs> yeah, he certainly is. Snow! <laughs> That's no way to speak to a guest. Besides, Mr. Benchley is the noted radio critic. Oh, well, I'm sure she didn't mean anything by it. <laughs> didn't I? No, you didn't. <laughs> now, Higgins, I want you to watch how I handle this. Snooks, was your daddy being mean to you? No. We were just playing a game. A game? Yeah. First, I would pull his hair like this. Oh! Oh, Snooks! (laughs) And I was only showing you. Then I would yank his tie like this. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Daddy, look at his eyes bulge out. (laughs) Let go of him, Snooks. (laughs) Hey, what are you doing with my watch, Snooks? I wouldn't let her do that, Mr. Benjamin. Oh, that's all right, Higgins. Just a child's natural curiosity about things mechanical. (laughs) (laughs) 
But I'll snooks my watch. How time flies. <laughs> that wasn't funny. Higgins, take this fiend off my lap and lock her back in the closet. It... Ah! Right here, come on. <laughs> well, of course, no system is perfect, is it? So here's another rule I've just added. If you want to learn how not to bring up a child, listen every Sunday to that great CBS program starring Fanny Bryce as Baby Snooks, with Hanley Stafford as Daddy, and that funny man Denny Thomas as Postman Jerry Dingle. Take my word for it, it's terrific. 